The best times to test your glucose. It's super, super important because you can't just take one snapshot in time and make a very important lifestyle decision based upon it. So I have a few different categories and it helps you understand when you should test your glucose and how frequently you should test your glucose. Jumping right into the first one, your fasting glucose level. It tells you a lot, but it also leaves a lot to be desired. Okay, if you go to the doctor twice a year, like we're supposed to, they might do some blood work and you might get some lab work and you test your glucose. They tell you, oh, okay, your fasting glucose is within range. Or they might say, your fasting glucose is out of range and you're pre-diabetic or you're diabetic. Okay, that tells you a lot, but that's a one snapshot in time thing. So if you're trying to understand just a general view, a general view, this is the first category, general view, test your glucose 15 minutes after waking prior to any coffee, okay? But do it three days in a row and take the average. Okay, this is very important because a lot of things can happen. Like I'll give you just a, my own story, my own personal example. Uh, I had a really stressful night, one particular night. I think I had gotten into a little bit of an argument with my wife and I was just like stressed out and I didn't sleep very well and I got up and I literally had to go get blood work done the next morning. I got up in the morning, my glucose was 125. And my doctor called me and was like, you are in the diabetic range. Now, I was overweight before, pre-diabetic. I'd gotten everything in check. I was like really nervous. I'm like, am I going back? Like, what's going on? Am I getting back there where I was before? Because I thought I had fixed all this. So I was kind of freaked out. Fortunately, my doctor was cool enough where he was like, why don't you take another test? Because this seems like an outlier. The next time I tested, 91, okay? So <laughs> that point is, it's very important. So test three days, because you don't know sometimes if you had a rough night of sleep, very clear indicators that poor sleep affects your glucose and it will directly affect it as far as what's called the dawn phenomena. You'll have a larger spike in the morning. So three consecutive days in a row and take that average just for a general view if you don't have a lot of time and resources to test. This next category, which is super, super important, okay? Because a lot of people say, if I'm healthy, why would I even want to monitor my glucose? Well, don't you think that most people think they're doing fine and think they're perfectly healthy until they have a call to action? That's what happens, right? You're 30, you're 35, you're even 40, everything's fine, you're healthy, then all of a sudden you're not. What if you had a five-year advantage to be able to see, oh, wait a minute, I'm heading down the wrong path. That is where even for seemingly healthy people, it's so important. So how do you test if you're becoming insulin resistant? So a lot of people think, let me test, let me get this snapshot in time. So they test their fasting glucose, and then maybe they do the right thing by testing after they eat. They're doing all the right things. But what you need to do, and it's, I know it's laborious, is you need to dedicate like two or three weeks to testing a lot. But you need to test under the exact same or as close to the exact same circumstances and exact same times. Okay, and what I would recommend is test in these five times. Your fasting glucose right when you wake up. Okay, then I also want you to test 30 minutes after a moderate carbohydrate meal then 120 minutes after a moderate carbohydrate meal. So 30 minutes and 120 minutes after that moderate carbohydrate meal. I want you to test before bed because that's very, very important. And I want you to test after exercise. Okay, those five things are super important. So you need to test those five things. This sounds crazy. You need to test those five things every day for about two or three weeks, a couple of times per year. Sounds like a lot of work, but that is gonna show you a trend. That is gonna give you very clear data. And those trends are going to tell you, yes, you are increasing this path towards insulin resistance and something needs to change. And I do lots of videos talking about how to change it, but that's the clear data that you want. Now within this, the reason that it's so important to test 30 and 120 minutes after eating, not just one or the other, is because you need to see how high you spike right after you eat but you need to see if you come back down. This is where the people that try to rain on the glucose testing parade really like to have a heyday. They say, well, your body's supposed to do this. It's supposed to spike and come back down. Yeah, but you know that over 50% of our population is diabetic. So that means over 50% of our population isn't coming back down. You have a one in two chance of being one of those people. I'd say that is perfectly, perfectly 
perfectly warranted to test your glucose as that data shines, right? So that's why it makes so much sense to test later too, to make sure you came back down. This next one is very important. We're talking about testing during stress, but more importantly, testing when you think you might be stressed, right? So there's certain things that you can do when you're stressed, and I've done other videos on this to really combat the high glucose levels. But what I'm talking about more in this particular case is you don't always know when you're stressed. You see, today's life, we are kind of at like a level eight all the time with stress. So we don't really know it anymore. Like we, there's the contrast theory, right? You don't recognize something unless it's a stark contrast. You level up and adapt to being at this level of seven, eight stress all the time. Well, that seven, eight stress is not good. So you don't realize that's gonna come your baseline. So when you're questioning, am I stressed right now? It's hard to like conceptualize it, right? But if you test your glucose, that's not gonna lie. So it's a validator. Okay, it's an ideal time. Someone says something to you and it irks you and you're like, is that bothering me? I can't tell if this is bothering me. Test your glucose. It will tell you, it will confirm or at least help you kind of deny, right? I notice it. I get stressed out after being on traffic or something like that. I test my glucose, whoa, boom, I'm up high. So it's a validator. It helps you be like, wait a minute, that stressed me out. I need to correct my life, correct my thoughts, become more mindful so that that doesn't happen. Your glucose monitor is not gonna do it for you, but it's gonna tell you so that logic you know how to do things. Also, when you are stressed, you should be eating differently. You should be eating lower carb when you're stressed, so you don't have an insulin and cortisol response at the same time. You should actually exercise mildly when you're stressed because it can actually help dissipate some of those glucose levels that pool. You should eat things that are higher in protein so that you can slow down that catabolizing. I put a link down below for Thrive Market, by the way. Very, very easy way to get a lot of snacks that are like higher protein, lower carb, because when you go to Thrive Market, you can sort by diet types. So you can sort by low carb or you can sort by no sugar. So I like having snacks on hand where if like I'm really hungry and I need to have something but I'm stressed, I don't go for potato chips. I don't go for something sweet. Uh, that link down below will save you 30% off your entire grocery order with Thrive as well. So you get 30% off, like you could load up your cart with $1,000 of groceries and save 30%. You just have to make sure you use that link down below in the description. But then upon check out, you can also select a free gift up to $50. So even if you use it one time or if you use it a hundred times or if you use it once a month like I do, it works out and you end up saving 30% off your entire first grocery order. So that link down below for Thrive Market, just make sure you sort by low carb when you're shopping for stress snacks. The next time you wanna test is a very important time and it's before you sleep. Now you might be thinking, why would I test before I sleep? Is it gonna tell me how I'm gonna sleep? Cause then I'm just gonna get stressed out about sleep. And yeah, you will if you do that. What you need to do is you need to have a very succinct kind of structured plan. Before you go to sleep, you test your glucose and you write that number down and then you forget about it. Go to sleep, you wake up in the morning and on a scale of one to 10, you write your perceived sleep quality. Sometimes perception is skewed, but on a scale of one to 10, how well did you sleep? Okay, do this for seven days. Write out any extra notes that might help you out with kind of aligning like what you did that day or whatever, but that's the most important data. Okay, so then at the end of the seven days, you look back and you say, wow, some days I went to bed and my glucose was 140 and my sleep quality was a two. And then wait a minute, this day my sleep quality was a 10 and my glucose was 85. It really confirms if your sleep problems are coming as a result of glycemic response. I'm not saying that glycemic control is going to fix all your sleep issues because there's a lot of deeply rooted stuff that goes on in there. I get it in that psyche, right? But if you can just eliminate this as a potential issue, that's great. I did, it helped me. I realized that for some reason my glucose would spike high at night, mainly because I was stressed at night because all this stuff would pile on from the day and I'd get stressed and I didn't sleep well. So once I started like mindfulness practices, meditation, things like that to bring my glucose down, yeah, you can make fun of me all you want for that stuff, but whatever. The point is, is when I do things to bring my glucose down, I sleep better. But you have to have quantitative, like objective data to look at, otherwise it doesn't help you. This next category is very important because it tells you how much you're really tapping into fat or fuel during a workout. Test your glucose before a workout and after a workout. If your glucose has spiked after a workout, that is normal. That means that your body is liberating glucose from the tissues to be used as fuel. And that means that you had a good workout. 
So a spike will actually tell you that you're probably in a higher likelihood of oxidizing some fat at that time as well. It's a very interesting thing to do and it tells you a whole lot. The other piece is testing before tells you if it's a good time metabolically to work out. If your glucose is high at that point in time, heck yes, that is a great time to go do more weight training, go do more anaerobic work where you can bring that glucose down. If your glucose is already kind of stable, you can either do hard work or you could just go for a walk or go for a jog because you're gonna have a better likelihood of oxidizing some more fat at that point based upon the fact that you don't have extra glucose in the bloodstream to burn through. So with this, this gives you a playbook to know when to test for optimal results without just having data for data's sake. It's great to collect data, but let's do something with it and understand when to use it. I'll see you tomorrow.